Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Pamela Singla, Professor at the Department of Social Work, University of Delhi. The topic for this session is Human Trafficking and Forced Marriages in India. After this session, you will be able to understand the concept of human trafficking. You will also be able to develop an insight into forced marriages and community engagement. Also, this session will help you to facilitate understanding of grassroots reality through field studies and generate awareness for formulation of policy level interventions. Now to begin with, this module looks into one of the lesser known but very pertinent area of human trafficking that is forced marriage. This module is divided into four parts. Part 1 gives an introduction to the practice of human trafficking. Part 2 examines the concept of forced marriages. Part 3 shares the findings of the various studies that have been conducted in this area and part 4 concludes the discussion. Now if I take part 1 which is on human trafficking, let us look at the concept. Basically trafficking of women and children is one of the worst forms of violation of human rights. It is a violation of right to life, right to liberty, human dignity and security of a person. Trafficking is understood as a trade in something that should not be traded for various social, economic and political reasons. This has been given by Sain and Nair in their study in 2005. Human trafficking similarly is seen as illegal trade of human beings. The UN protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, 2000, gives a very comprehensive definition of trafficking. To add, the Indian constitution prohibits all forms of trafficking under article 23. So, coming to the protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, supplementing the United Nations Convention against Transnational Organized Crime, hereafter referred to as trafficking in persons protocol. It defines trafficking in persons as follows and which is very important for us to know within quotes. The recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of persons by way of the threat or use of force, force or other forms of coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power or of a position of vulnerability or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. Exploitation shall include at a minimum the exploitation of the prostitution of others or other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor or services, slavery or practices similar to slavery, servitude or the removal organs. The suppression of the Immoral Traffic Act 1956 known as SITA, amended to, got amended to Immoral Traffic Prevention Act ITPA in 1986 was passed following the ratification of the International Convention on the Suppression of Immoral Traffic and Exploitation of Prostitution of Others in 1950 by India. The Goa Children's Act 2003 is the only other Indian law dealing with trafficking. However, none of these laws have been accompanied by an independent and sustained mass movement against trafficking in the country. We have this play which actually is implying that it is important for us to stop the human trafficking. India is a source destination and transit point cutting across men, women and children who are subjected to forced labor and sex trafficking. 90% of trafficking in India is internal and those from India's most disadvantaged social strata, including the lowest castes, who are most vulnerable. Along with adults, children are also victim to human trafficking. The caste system allows for human trafficking to thrive. This is because those in the lower caste are taught that they have lesser value than the higher caste. It is accepted that those at the top take advantage of those at the bottom, even as far as trafficking them to for trafficking them for slave labor, as per Morrison 2000 and 
12. Existing patterns of trafficking in women and girls within India show that they are usually trafficked for sexual exploitation. Nepal and Bangladesh contribute an increasing number of women and girls subjected to sex trafficking in India, followed by Ukraine and Russia. Reports also show a trend of females from northeastern states of India and Odisha subjected to trafficking to other places, Haryana and Punjab, to quote, in India, these states have low female to male sex ratios. The activity of human trafficking has expanded moving away from the conventional locations and a trafficking from urban to rural areas from the usual pattern of rural to urban areas. These shift and expansion of trafficking make it harder to detect the activities of trafficking. Display 2 once again shows that human trafficking is nothing less than being in chains. Human trafficking in India can be categorized under the following categories, trafficking for child labor, trafficking for sex trade, trafficking for forced marriage, trafficking for organ transplant and trafficking for escort houses or massage parlor. The next section examines the concept of forced marriages as a form of human trafficking. When we, this is the part two, forced marriages, we look at the concept, United Nations views forced marriage as a human rights abuse because ultimately the right to marry a person is one's choice. The generally accepted definition says that forced marriage occurs without the full and free consent of one or both the parties and or where one or both parties are unable to end or leave the marriage. It differs from arranged marriage in which both parties consent to the assistance of their parents or a third party which is involved in identifying a spouse. Now, victims fall prey to forced marriages through deception, abduction, coercion, fear and inducements. Generally, it is the woman who easily falls the prey. Some victims of forced marriage are tricked into going to another country by their families and often experience physical violence, rape, abduction, torture, false imprisonment and enslavement, sexual abuse, mental and emotional abuse and at times even murder. Forced marriage is reflective of nothing less than gender inequality that unfortunately disseminates the concept that girls are nothing more than objects to be utilized for another's benefit. Forced marriages are also seen as cross-border marriages. The term cross-border marriages emphasizes on the crossing of the border which could be state or national for the purpose of marriage. Marriage migration has been the most significant type of migration for women in India. The largest permanent migration in the world occurs as women in India move to live with their husband's family on marriage. This is a study done by Full Ford in 2013. Now, according to Shekhar, his study in 2012, across India, three quarters of women older than 22 years have left their place of birth for marriage. In 2001, 42 out of the 65 million female migrants cited marriage as the reason for migration. Cross-border marriages in India involves the marriage of women from underdeveloped or economically marginalized regions in the country with such men. The trend which began in Haryana and Punjab now appears to have spread to other parts of India such as Rajasthan, Western Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. Poverty and social cultural practices in the form of dowry seem to be the most compelling factor for cross-border marriages, a study done by Kukreja and Kumar in 2013. While the practice of dowry is an important factor leading to cross-border marriages in different states, as per the study by Singh in 2004, the adverse sex ratio and other factors such as the skin tone, appearance and low level of literacy also contributes to the cross-region marriages. This has resulted in situation of rapid increase in the flow of cross-border marriage migration, particularly between the Kerala, Karnataka, Haryana and Tamil Nadu. There exist different kinds of cross-border marriages, which is commonly called as Haryana marriage, Mysore Kalyanam, Mali Kalyanam and Arabi Kalyanam, etc. 
and a large number of women migrate to other states as brides every year. Coming to adverse sex ratio as an important reason for cross state marriages according to the United Nations, India now have an estimated 50 million women and girls who are missing attributed to illegal activities like the practice of female feticide and infanticide. The evidence in Haryana serves as a fitting testimonial to these estimates. This culminates to wives buying through trafficking of females. Jhajjar district in Haryana is facing a severe shortage of girls to marry their boys. The situation might not have caught the attention of researchers, media and policy makers had it not emerged that there are no brides for the men in the district. The birth of a son seen as a boon by the local people is creating a severe crisis in the state which is now forced to purchase girls from the other states to marry their men, an emerging form of trafficking. The next section looks into the findings of the study by the author along with another study to analyze the practice of forced marriages. The part 3 of the session focuses on field studies, the findings of some of the studies that have been conducted. For instance, a field study was done in 2010 by a Pune based organization named Drishti Istri Adhyan Prabodhan Kendra on the impact of sex ratio on the pattern of marriages in Haryana. It is interesting to see their findings which are as follows. Out of the 10,000 households covered, more than 50% married women in Haryana are brought from other states. The study covered 92 villages of Mahindargarh, Sirsa, Karnal, Sonipat and Mewat districts. Most of the people accepted it as a common practice but denied having bought a bride in their family. They found that in every village more than 50 girls have been purchased of which some are as young as 13 years and a very small percentage of them are living a married life. Most of them are untraceable or exploited or duplicated as domestic servants by the agents or men who marry or buy them. The study also found instances where after a few years of married life, the girls were resold to other men. Most of these girls come from poverty ridden villages of Assam, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Bihar and Orissa because their families need money. Despite the prevalence of dowry system in northern North India states or as we say northern states, men are ready to pay for a wife. The pretext of marriage and the social sanction makes it difficult for the police or the NGOs to trace the trafficking or the atrocities as women really speak of the domestic disturbances. Shakti Vahini According to Shakti Vahini, only a small number of women who enter into forced marriage lead a settled married life. They are exploited and treated like commodities because a price has already been paid for them. The organization shared that they have rescued women who were raped, tortured and denied medical attention for years before being dumped at a public place. At times their condition is so bad that the women cannot even name the village she comes from or the man who brought her there. According to them, justifying, when I say according to them, that means Shakti Vahini, justifying trafficking under the garb of skewed sex ratio and poverty is only making things difficult for the women. Jhajjar Haryana, I share with you the findings of a study which was conducted by me in Jhajjar. The findings show that while trying to locate the families where the married woman was from a different state, it was realized that the villagers identified the family with the man's name and with a suffix within quotes, jiski bivi mol lai gai hai, the one who has purchased his wife. The local people showed lack of willingness to accompany the author to the houses of these families. This could probably be to avoid being associated with them and also the feeling that the family might get annoyed on such sensitive information being shared with the outsiders. Then another finding was the purchase money ranges between INR 20,000 to INR 50,000. Families deny paying the bride price and it is a common practice among such families that the women has been purchased with an expectation to bear a son to the family. The girls have been married at a young age and not even consulted beforehand. 
Hence, they rarely know if a bride price had been paid for them. Since it had been long since the women of the author's sample got married, they seemed to simply have accepted their fate and adjusted to it. It's also interesting to see that in case the man holds a government job or is economically sound, irrespective of whatever his negatives are, he might even be physically challenged, but he gets married easily. A man who is 30 years and above is considered old. Unmarried men were seen to be desperate to marry a girl from their culture. Unmarried men seemed to be as much in number as the married men. In other words, they were easily locatable. Unmarried men were easy targets of casual jokes within their peers and were very much a part of the community gatherings and celebrations. Men who had advanced in age and were not married shied from being questioned on the reason for them not getting married. It was shared that any prospective groom, now this is actually a slightly uh, risky thing, he shared that he was getting engaged, he ran the risk of the engagement being called off due to bad mouthing by jealous relatives and neighbors. Now different stories have emerged regarding how well the married woman is kept by her husband. The elderly believe that the woman is looked after since a price has been paid so that she can manage the family and bear children, especially sons. However, there were cases where the girl ran away after marriage. The reason cited were that since they were not informed earlier by their families about the marriage, they probably were not prepared for a married life and that too in a different culture. Local leaders shared cases of women who after identifying the potential economic benefit from the shortage of girls go back to their village and demand money from the husband in view of returning to him. In another case, a woman who got married at bright price duped her husband by running away from after marriage. This seems to be an emerging trend to make quick money. Also, the local leaders denied the scenario of one wife serving multiple men, something that we call a dropdi issue. They said that there was nothing like this. Marriages cannot take place between Bhaichara villages and this creates a further shortage of girls. Barter marriages also takes place, implying that parents marry their daughters in a family in return for a bride for their sons. Basically explaining the Bhaichara villages, they are a cluster of villages that fall within a radius of 15 to 20 kilometers and are considered one family. Marriage within these families are strictly prohibited. Couples have been prosecuted for going against this rule. Now, marrying a girl from outside is stigmatizing for the family because of various factors such as it reflects poorly on both the man and the woman who have entered into matrimony. It implies that the man is economically weak, is unemployed or earns less and thus was unable to get a local family who would marry their daughter to him. He could be an addict or an alcoholic. Marrying their children could create a problem in future as they would be known as the children of a mother who was purchased because the father was incompetent to get a girl from within the state. Some men thus prefer to remain unmarried rather than marrying someone from outside their state. Supplier states. The shortage of the girls in the district has led to girls being trafficked from the other states of the country. Girls are being purchased from the Bimaru states and as we know Bimaru states has been a term defined by Ashish Bose and the northern, northern eastern parts of India which have a good sex ratio and are also considered economically poor. Agents engage professionally in supplying girls. At times the marriage also happens through someone known to the family. Due to shortage of girls in the area, Almost every family has at least one unmarried man. Though historically it was done to keep him as a standby in case a misfortune occurs in the family implying that in case any brother dies then his wife gets married to the unmarried brother. Now this was shared by the BDO. But now these unmarried men remain unmarried due to shortage of girls. The choice for them is either remain unmarried or purchase a girl with the attached ramifications. The findings show that the bias against girls rooted in short-term economic considerations is slowly but surely leaving behind long-term scars that Haryana will find difficult to heal. A lot of its men may just be forced to stay single with brides hard to come by. So in the end, if I conclude this session, I can say that this ghastly practice of trafficking young girls in the form of forced marriages needs to be stopped. This can be done when the women and men of the state 
realize the importance of girls and not treat them as a burden or commodities. Government initiatives and intensive awareness generation programs need to be organized, monitored and evaluated. The practice is not only harming the young girls of the poor states, but is an indication of the inhuman practice of killing the female fetus and ill-treating the girls who are born. A collective discussion on such practices is vital at both the national and the international level to arrive at policies and conventions so that places like Jhajjar are soon stopped from becoming, within quotes, village of men. Thank you.